Hello everyone and welcome to my media tour breakdown. This video will be covering Reaper, and considering this is a brand new job for Final Fantasy XIV in Endwalker, it will probably be the longest one. Now this is just an overview, not a guide, so don't take anything here as an indication of how you should play, but rather what will be available to you in Endwalker. I will also be keeping this overview to what is available at level 90 rather than the entire course of your leveling experience. Of course, everything here is development footage and is subject to adjustments and changes in the final build. From my limited experience with Reaper, it is a very well-rounded melee class. Most of Reaper's kit centers around the Soul and Shroud gauges. The Soul gauge is filled by executing weapon skills, then spent on abilities that fill the Shroud gauge, which is then spent to go into your avatar form via Enshroud. Reaper is also extremely mobile, having a gap closer and disengage which gives you access to an empowered ranged ability and also allows you to teleport back to your original spot. On top of that, Reaper also has access to a party-wide damage boost as well as some damage mitigation. I'll be going into each of these aspects in more detail throughout this video. Let's start with the general weapon skill rotations. Reaper has a single target and AoE rotation, with the naming convention typically being Slice and Scythe respectively. The single target combo goes from Slice to Waxing Slice to Infernal Slice. The AoE combo is Spinning Scythe into Nightmare Scythe. None of these currently have positional requirements. These weapon skills will be used to gain Soul Gauge which opens up new combo paths. There are also two standalone weapon skills, Soul Slice and Soul Scythe, which each have two charges and immediately give 50 Soul Gauge when executed. These two weapon skills share a cooldown timer with each other and will recover a charge every 30 seconds. Soul Gauge combos are based on using abilities that grant Soul Reaver, which then unlock the abilities needed to fill the Shroud Gauge. Bloodstock is single target and Grim Swathe is AoE, both giving one stack of Soul Reaver and being on a one second cooldown. Gluttony, on the other hand, is a 500 potency AoE that grants two stacks of Soul Reaver for the same cost, but on a 60 second cooldown. If you use another weapon skill before spending Soul Reaver stacks, the stacks will be lost, though the enhancements on Shroud abilities will stay the same. The Shroud abilities are Gallows and Gibbet for single target and Guillotine for AoE. Gallows has a rear positional and Gibbet has a flank positional. Each ability only costs one Soul Reaver stack and grants 10 Shroud Gauge. Once your Shroud Gauge hits 50, you can use Enshroud, which fuses your character with your avatar and changes your Soul and Shroud abilities, while also unlocking a new gauge of Lemuray Shroud and Void Shroud Orbs. Shroud abilities consume Lemuray Orbs, leaving behind Void Orbs, enhancing each other and losing their positional requirements. Soul abilities consume the Void Orbs. The finisher to this phase is called Communio, which is a powerful AoE attack that requires at least one Lemuray Orb and will end the effects of Enshroud on execution. I'll take a moment to just show footage of this to give you time to process because even just going through all that for you has started to melt my brain. The rotation I showed here is nowhere near optimal, but hopefully you got an idea for the general flow of abilities as you work through your rotation. Before moving on, there is of course Arcane Circle and Plentiful Harvest. Arcane Circle is kind of like Reaper's version of Monk's Brotherhood. When activated, nearby party members will have their damage increased by 3% for 20 seconds. Additionally, those affected will gain 5 seconds of Circle of Sacrifice, and the Reaper will gain 6 seconds of Bloodsworn Circle. While the latter effects are active, the use of weapon skills and spells grant the Reaper up to 8 stacks of Immortal Sacrifice. These stacks are used to execute Plentiful Harvest. This weapon skill is an AoE that requires 1 stack of Immortal Sacrifice with a potency of 520 to 800 depending on how many extra stacks have been accumulated, dealing 60% less damage on subsequent enemies. Regardless of how many Immortal Sacrifice stacks you've accumulated, Plentiful Harvest will also increase your Shroud Gauge by 50. Next, I'd like to talk about Shadow of Death and Whorl of Death. Both abilities afflict enemies with Death's Design, which increases their damage taken from the Reaper by 
Shadow is single target and Whirl is AoE, and while these kinds of abilities usually fall on the chopping block at some point or another, having an AoE version of a damage increase is a very cool thing. On the note of buffs and debuffs, Solso is an ability that, when used, changes to the ability Harvest Moon. Normally, Solso requires 5 seconds to cast, but if it's used out of combat, it becomes instant. Harvest Moon is an AoE that deals 600 potency to the first enemy and 50% less for all others. It also has a range of 25 yams, which is the same as the other ranged attack, Harp. Speaking of Harp, I'll take a second to give more spotlight to the Reaper's Gap Closer and Disengage. Hell's Ingress moves you 15 yams forward, and Hell's Engress moves you 15 yams back. Both empower Harp to become an instant cast ability instead of a 2.5 second cast. They also leave behind a Hell's Gate at their initial location while giving the Reaper the Threshold buff. Using Regress under the effects of Threshold will allow you to teleport back to the Hell's Gate. Finally, we have Arcane Crest, which is a shield on the Reaper equal to 10% of their maximum health. If the barrier is broken, the Reaper and nearby party members will gain a 15 second regen through the effect of Crest of Time Returned. Now, there might be more about this job that I'm missing, but these are the things that stuck out to me the most during my time playing. Like I said at the beginning, I think this is a very well-rounded job and it feels very good to play. Once you get the hang of the abilities, it's really not that complex, although you still will be hitting a lot of buttons. After getting your hotbars in a comfortable spot, however, it should go really smoothly. Thank you all for watching. If you're interested in the rest of my media tour coverage, be sure to check out the other videos I've done on it. There should be a playlist up so you can have everything in one place. God bless you all, and we'll see you in the next one.